1948, Ulm, like the rest of Germany, was still in ruins and of course had to be rebuilt. And the industry, which was now really mass producing things, was waiting for designers and they needed designers. And of course one wanted to have good quality products. So the concept of the Ulm School design just came at the right time. The school itself only existed for 16 years between 1953 and 68 but the building still exists and houses the archive of the former Ulm School of Design. The Ulm model uh, was defined by Otto Eicher, one of the founders, uh, the following way. He says the Ulm model is a model of design based on science and technology and the product designer is no longer an artist, a superior artist, but he is involved in the decision-making process of industrial production. And that means you are not working in sort of an ivory tower by yourself, having the stroke of genius, how the most beautiful stackable tableware might look, but you have to work systematically uh, on your product design, on your design, and will find eventually a solution which is sustainable and sort of timeless. Here we see the compact appliance SK4, a combination of an LP player plus radio, and it, everything is new about the design because up to then uh, appliances like this rather looked like furniture because people didn't like to have uh, technical products in the living room so they tried to hide them in chests of drawers or similar furniture but <clears throat> Hans Gugelow who was the designer uh, chooses a fair colored wood he chooses a metal box colored white and especially the lid made in perspex, that's an absolutely new thing and of course this gives the whole uh, product the nickname Snow White's Coffin. An iconic product of the Ulm School design is the stackable tableware by Hans Nick Röhricht and it really is one of the first uh, tablewares where every part is stackable. The idea of stackable uh, tableware we already can find in the 30s but that a whole set of tableware would be stackable, this is really the very first. And this is also typical of the Ulm School of Design. It was more or less immediately uh, put into the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, but also it was produced more than 40 years in a row between 1962 and 2006. And that's really a big success, of course, and also shows the quality of the product. Car design was not a specialty at the Ulm School of Design because the car industry was sort of the Antichrist, was the symbol of capitalism and of course the Ulm School had a leftist bend, I would say. Nevertheless, two students and one automobile critic uh, designed this car, but in secret, and they presented this design at the Frankfurt Fair in 1965 and we were awarded. It is the idea of the family van but 20 years before the first one was produced. Here we see the Ulm Stuhl. The Ulm Stuhl was designed for the new building of the Hochschule für Gestaltung, the Ulm School of Design. It was designed by Max Bill, Paul Hildinger and Hans Güzelow. And Paul Hildinger, he actually was not a designer but the master of the wood workshop. And it's for me really the quintessential product of the school because it's simple, it's functional, it can be built quite easily with cheap material because in the beginning, in the first years, the school was really poor. They just had the money to build the school but no money to buy furniture so they had to design it themselves. And you must imagine that they really carried around the stool around the building from the students hall to the lecture room, to the workshop. Some stools here in the exhibition. So first you see here the dovetail joining, which at that time was still cheap to do because time was not as costly as today. Over here you see how they designed this bottom part with a slight intendation here. And of course, this is the way I could hold it and maybe even carry some books around the school building. And here we have even an image of Max Bill, one of the founders of the school, um, using it as a lectern during his lecture. 
The most important contribution of the Ulm School of Design is that they worked on the profile of the designer as a profession. Up to then, a designer could be an architect or a painter or a sculptor, but there was no school where you could go to to become an industrial designer. No, nowhere in the world, and even at the Bauhaus, we still have the, uh, artists working mainly as product designers. And so the Ulm School of Design took much effort and thinking into developing this profile. And in the end, eventually, the ideas of Ulm, especially this idea about the designer as a profession, became a model for many schools worldwide. There are two schools in Brazil based on the Ulmer Hochschule für Gestaltung. And of course, in Germany, there are many schools who took the whole concept or part of the concept as a model for their own schools.